Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? One of the big questions around the Saints all offseason has been quarterback. Of course, they added Derek Carr. They re-signed Jameis Winston to the surprise of many, including yours truly. Hey, Twitter world. Why not? George, it's George Truly. Um, the most realistic target at quarterback that we've talked about ad nauseum is Hendon Hooker. He's the guy that's most likely going to be on the board for the Saints potentially at 29. So we've talked a lot about Hendon Hooker. Um, I really like Hendon Hooker a lot. If they pull the trigger, I wouldn't hate it. Uh, I don't necessarily love the idea of drafting a quarterback high considering you just committed the money you did for at least two years to Derek Carr, and so you don't necessarily get the benefit of having a quarterback on a rookie deal. Anyway, that doesn't necessarily preclude the Saints from drafting a quarterback later in the draft if one is available. We saw him do it a couple of years ago with Ian Book in round four. It's been a while now, but if you remember, they had um, a Garrett Grayson in round three out of Colorado State. So the Saints have pulled the trigger in middle or later rounds on quarterbacks way back when they drafted Sean Canfield in round seven. Remember that out of, out of Oregon State. So they'll pull the trigger on a quarterback in, in later rounds if there's a guy on the board that, that they like. This one is interesting to me. Uh, Jordan Schultz is reporting that uh, UCLA quarterback Dorian Thompson Robinson is vid visiting the Saints today. He notes DTR was two-time All-Pac-12. Uh, and that NFL teams are NFL teams, excuse me, are intrigued by his ability to move the pocket, versatility as a runner. Ran four, five, six at the combine. Okay. The reason that I think this in particular is even more interesting is because the Saints were at a private workout in LA last week with DTR at UCLA's campus. So the Saints went out to L.A. for a private workout with DTR last week. And now they have him in New Orleans. I can understand the smoke and mirrors game. The gamesmanship at the top of the draft. If you've got a top five pick and you want teams to think you're interested in a quarterback because maybe you want to entice that team outside of the top five, to jump into the top five, I get it. Like, hypothetically, if Atlanta were interested in a quarterback, I know they've committed to Desmond Ritter, so they say publicly, it would make a lot of sense if Atlanta were going to move in somewhere in the top five if there was someone they love. Like, let's say let's say Will Levis does go two and C.J. Stroud's hanging around three, four. It could make sense that you move up a few spots to get the guy you love if you think that the team there in the top five might draft a quarterback. Um, maybe the, the best example I should have given would have been the Patrick Mahomes example. The Saints really like Patrick Mahomes. Word leaked. Andy Reid and the Chiefs jumped ahead of the Saints to take Mahomes because they knew he'd probably come off the board to New Orleans. So they went up to 10 to get him. But when you're talking about DTR, who by most accounts is an early day three guy, if that's the case... You don't fly to L.A. to work him out and then bring him to New Orleans for a day three quarterback, generally speaking. Now, I I'm not a scout. You'll know that. I'm not here to tell you anything that you know about DTR that you don't already know or haven't already seen. Saw DTR in L.A. when we went and saw LSU play there to start the 2021 season. He's a really good player, man. He is super athletic. He makes all the throws. He's a great leader, um, played a ton of football over five years in Los Angeles. So there's a lot to like. The thing you don't like is the thing everybody always talks about is just the size. I mean, he's listed at 6'2". That's probably generous. Probably more like 6'1", 205. Runs a lot. Maybe could be you know, an injury risk, but super athletic. And in the modern age of football, you are seeing guys that can move the pocket or the guys that are the most appealing. So... Um, I, I like DTR a lot. Like if DTR is on the board and the Saints want to use one of their fifth, they got two fifth round picks. Want to use a fifth round pick on DTR? I'm pumped about it. But I do think now 
it is becoming more common to find a starting quarterback outside of round one than ever. And the reason, this is just my hypothesis, is because the NFL game is morphing into what the college game has been. Instead of what was forever the college game more trying to mirror the NFL and you look for the best players in that system who make the transition to the next level successfully, what's happening actually is in reverse. The college game evolved with the advancement of seven-on-sevens. Quarterbacks became more dual-threat guys that can run, move the pocket, you know, shotgun, pistol formation, two-step, go, you know, let go of the ball, predetermined reads, all that sort of stuff. Well, when that's the majority of what the game is now at the high school and college levels, th- that's what the that is what colleges are producing to the NFL, and so the NFL game has morphed into more of what the college game is. Uh, instead of the traditional under center eye formation, what what football was for years and years and years. Um, So I think you're seeing more quarterbacks who have success in those systems who may not be the prototypical NFL prospect that are having success at the next level. And I think evidence of that, look at the playoffs this past year, y'all. 14 teams in the playoffs. When you look at the draft spot for the 14 quarterbacks that started playoff games this past year. Seahawks, Niners. Geno Smith was a second rounder. Brock Purdy was a seventh rounder. You had Herbert against Lawrence, both first rounders. You know, when Miami played Buffalo, of course, Josh Allen was a first rounder. Skylar Thompson was a seventh rounder, but the caveat there is, of course, Tua was hurt and Tua was a first rounder. But Skylar Thompson started the playoff game, seventh round pick. Daniel Jones was a first-rounder against Kirk Cousins, a fourth-rounder. Ravens, Bengals, Lamar and Burrow, both first-rounders. You had Cowboys, uh, Bucks, so Dak against Brady, that was a fourth-rounder against a sixth-rounder. And then the two teams that had buys in the first round were the Eagles and the Chiefs, so Hurts and Mahomes, a second-rounder and a first-rounder. So when you look at it, of the 14 quarterbacks to start to, you know, to make the playoffs, Half of them, seven, were first-rounders. But that means half of the quarterbacks that started in the playoffs this year were were outside of round one. You had two second-rounders, two fourth-rounders, a sixth-rounder, and two seventh-rounders. Point is, you can find playoff-caliber quarterbacks outside of round one because of the nature of the NFL game and how it's evolving. Brock Purdy, 15 years ago, would have no shot in the NFL. Probably wouldn't even been playing quarterback. Now, he can run that offense. doesn't matter that he's a short guy. It's part of the reason why Bryce Young's going to be the first pick of the draft. So, if the Saints scout and evaluate DTR, and he has a skill set they really like, and you can get him with an agreeable draft pick, maybe early in day three, and it's a bit of a project, okay. I mean, I'm cool drafting DTR, stashing him on the practice squad for a year. You see what happens with Jameis after this season. And if you like DTR, maybe he's your backup for Carr in 2024. And then potentially in year three is is, uh, in the mix to be your franchise quarterback. Maybe. Maybe it plays out that way. Or maybe you draft him and he's a total bust and after a year he's gone just like Ian Book. But I'm okay taking that shot. Because maybe you find Kirk Cousins in round four. Maybe you find Dak in round four. I'm not saying you find Brady in round six, but could you find Brock Purdy in round seven? Yeah. Could you find Could you find Jalen Hurts in round two? Could you find Russell Wilson in round three? Yeah. But not if you don't make the pick. So, DTR, another name to keep an eye on. Saints are showing a lot of interest. And considering where he slotted to go in the draft, it wouldn't make an awful lot of sense for the Saints to be showing this much interest if it was just games and shit. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.